What's going on, everybody? Hi. How are we doing? I hope we're doing great. Let me just uh, lower the audio a little bit more so you can hear me. This is a tricky process because, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, my uh, my production capabilities on the MacBook are are fairly limited, which is why my live streams on Facebook are are fairly limited. I feel like someone is watering their garden behind me, but. Um, on today's uh, on today's kitchen uh, expedition, what I will be making is my classic, uh, very famous now, especially on the Twitch stream, uh, Mediterranean chicken. Now, uh, usually for subscribers on my Twitch, I uh, also send like a literal, like I'll do uh, a couple different quick things that they enjoy. Like I'll send them the recipes and whatnot. Holy shit! I'm just like straight up holding up the the MacBook right now, but anyway, um, sorry, it's very hot in here, and this is usually a terrible, terrible, terrible decision, but whatever, we're gonna do it anyway, we're gonna freaking, we're gonna heck and do it live, guys, we're gonna do it live, so here, first and foremost, we start the process off with, just by getting this chicken out of the, the little container, and um, unfortunately, a lot of people use, like, organic chicken and whatnot, I use whatever kind of chicken I can get because uh, I'm not very wealthy so that's part of the reason this is like a very it's like a very cheap alternative uh, but it tastes really good it has really good macros so that's literally why I do it it's one way I've been able to lose so much weight and I know so many people ask this all the time which is why I'm doing this right now when I'm talking about it so yeah this is already like a difficult process guys to like get this chicken to, to free this chicken from its from its boundaries while also trying to describe to you the process in which I I uh hold on. I know the big debate go is I'm just an average guy who read public documents where the elite said they were gonna enslave us and destroy America and I'm not gonna be like Yuppie Scum and deny the threat to my country. Thank I'm gonna you. fight back. Thank you for the subscription. Uh, I'm not on I'm not even live on Twitch yet. Uh, I should have probably shut off those notifications, but uh, thank you for that subscription on my Twitch, even though I'm not even live on Twitch yet. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I will be in a minute. I will be soon. Ugh. All right, so you, you free the chicken breast fillets first, just time in case of the Mondays. All right, well, yeah, this is what we're here for. By the way, they lied to me and said that the, well, I mean, I guess, I guess Foster Farms lies about a lot of things because they say that this is like fresh and natural freaking doubt that but uh, anyway in our hands we have approximately approximately three pounds three and a half pounds of straight white chicken breast I get like two of these uh, sometimes three of these big packets every week I take this part and I dump it in the sink and I wash my hands Wash my hands because I touched the chicken. Hold on. That's a very key factor. I know that you guys have a, a big problem with, so definitely making sure that that is uh, addressed. You know what I mean? Because I know that that's like something that you guys get very touchy on. It's like making sure I wash my hands. I get it. I'm doing that right now. Um, I'm not going to wash the chicken, no. And as you guys know, I am a firm believer in not washing the chicken. Uh, where are my clippers? So, usually this is what I use. This is honestly a trick I found out from like uh, like uh, Mexican street vendors when they're cutting their chicken. In order not to touch the chicken itself, they use like this sort of clamp. I use it as well. I highly recommend that. Uh, get a clamp, like maybe a metal one. I use this like plastic one because it's, it's cheap. And I think it was like maybe my roommate's at some point and my roommate doesn't use it anymore because he's vegan and it touched meat. I don't know what happened, but I mean, essentially this is what I use to, to separate the chicken while also cutting. 
uh, like while I'm cutting it. And then it's basically what I use when I spice the chicken up. And I recommend that for you guys as well. Therefore, you, this way you don't get to touch the chicken, which I feel like is a big point of contention for a lot of people, and that is understandable. You don't want to get salmonella. Some people die from salmonella in this day and age, apparently. I like salmonella. I assume that it'll late help you lose some weight, but it is yet to happen to me because I have an iron constitution. Just like our country. You know what I'm saying? These chickens are slippery, man. Hold on. Where are you going, little cheeky? <sighs> anyway, so this process is a little bit longer. This is where I can perhaps answer some of your questions if you have any. I'm going to take a look at it right now. Luckily, I'm using the, the clippers and I'm not touching anything, so uh, I can actually... Who would win in a cage fight? Tommy Lauren versus Sarah Palin. You said, when are you coming to Denver? I think I'm coming to Denver on the 16th, maybe, or the 17th of November. Uh, if you go to politicon.com slash tour, you can find out those dates exactly and get the uh, appropriate... Yeah, I also stand Johnny Dugan. Are you and Maddie Bragg going to get married? Uh, very interesting question. No, Maddie Bragg is a good friend of mine, though. Uh, and uh, she is a beautiful soul and also an incredible chef, which I didn't know. I've never had her food, but I see it on her Instagram all the time. Shocking that a Maddie Bragg fan is actually on, uh, is actually on this stream. I didn't even realize people that liked her YouTube videos were even in the same demographic of people who would watch my political streams, or even just me cooking or cutting chicken for the most part. But cool, thank you, thank you for the view, and I hope this is an entertaining stream for you as well. Alright, any other questions, guys? Let's keep them coming, let's keep those questions coming, let's keep those hearts going. That's something that people say when they're live streaming, uh, that's why I'm saying it. I don't necessarily quite understand why people say it, when they say, oh, let's get those hearts going, everybody, but uh, yeah. Let's do it. Anyway, how are you going to cook the chicken? Well, right now, I'm not going to cook the chicken at all. Uh, I'm just uh, I'm just spicing it up because I'm a spicy boy. Um, by the way, this is another good opportunity for me to mention this because it's something that a lot of people ask. People are always like, Hassan, what is a Twitch? I don't get it. Why do you want me to go there? Well, the reason why I want you to go to my Twitch is because I have a way better setup over there, way better camera. And uh, I get to interview people, and, and it's awesome. And I play video games every now and then. It's just a different platform. than It's kind of like YouTube, basically. But instead of uh, on-demand videos and a library of on-demand videos, which they have, uh, they uh, oh, specialize in, yeah. in live videos. So all you need to do is essentially go there, like TK Shadowblade just did, and uh, hit follow, which is like a little heart on the top of my screen on the twitch.tv slash Hasanabi page, all you need to do is literally go to that page and click follow, it's the heart button, and then click turn on notifications. That way, you can literally get uh, get caught up in, in a similar, in a not dissimilar fashion to whenever I go live on Facebook and Facebook informs you. You can get caught up every time I go live on Twitch. The reason why I like going live on Twitch, partially is because it has a great community. There's like no trolls, there's nothing, we have moderators who... Who, uh, who regulate the conversation. I debate people on there, which a lot of people seem to appreciate. Uh, I, I even play uh, video games with subscribers, if that's what they are interested in. I debate subscribers. I debate people with conflicting opinions. So, you know, you have a lot of opportunity on there for, for a lot of different kinds of content. Essentially, what I'm saying is, if you enjoy what I do, and you are like, Hassan, you're a very creative guy. I wish I saw more of you. Um, which, by the way, is understandable if you don't feel that way. Like, I totally get it, because I don't want to see more of myself, really. Um, then Twitch is for you. If you're like, nah, dude, seeing you three minutes a day on Facebook, and then some of these live videos that you do is enough for me, totally understand that as well, then uh, Twitch is not for you. You know what I mean? But ultimately, it's a free platform. You don't have to do anything additional. Um, you can even subscribe and get, like, all these other cool benefits, like, for example, the uh, chicken recipe that I have going on here. 
right now. Like you can get that. Usually I like send out recipes or send out things like oh, I'm, once I hit a certain goal, I'm gonna do a video with Tomei, my, my trainer, to talk about intermittent fasting. I like set that up earlier this week, this past weekend. So you know, there's like little goals. It's really fun. Thank you for all the people that are signing up right now, by the way. All you need to do is just go there and follow. It's not like a crazy process at all. And by the way, when you do go there and follow, when I go live there in a couple minutes, you'll be able to uh, enjoy in, and continue this conversation and uh, enjoy this journey. Uh, some of the subjects that we're going to be talking about today, of course, are going to be Brett Kavanaugh. Oh, yeah. Which is... Uh, which is an obvious point of contention, uh, and, and how the Republicans have decided to defend against them, which I think is kind of ridiculous. You're just not supposed to rinse chicken. Cross-contamination can cause salmonella. I do, I do exact, I, I do agree with that. But that's not, per, that's not the reason why I don't. Just rinsing chicken is a frivolous, ridiculous concept. It's just, I don't understand it. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't kill the bacteria. It doesn't prevent anything from happening. It just makes you feel good. And, like, there are a multitude of studies that prove this. So it's only, like, it's only just a housewife tale, essentially, that you need to get the, to clean your chicken before you splice it. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's, it's just crazy to me that, like, so many people have, have been, have had such passionate points of contention with this. People are, are, people are very vocally dissenting against my decision not to clean this chicken. I don't do it, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to do it. You can absolutely clean your chicken. You know, I'm not telling you how to live your life. You, you live your best damn life. You know, you clean that chicken. And you clean that chicken good. Not for me, though. Maybe one day. Maybe one day when I'm truly, quote-unquote, woke. Oh, the other thing about Twitch, by the way, is that, like, I get to talk about things that I believe in uh, in, a, in a much longer and much more personable format. You guys can ask me questions like, what do you think about cancel culture? Some of those videos do end up on YouTube, by the way. If you go to my YouTube page, I treat it like basically an archive for, for some of the best highlights. For example, I have a really funny uh, Marky Mark impersonation that I did on 9-11 because uh, at some point Marky Mark, Mark Wahlberg, for those of you who don't know the, the popular way to refer to Marky Mark, um, he claimed that on 9-11, he would have actually stopped the terrorists if he was on one of those planes going from Logan Airport in Boston to towards New York. Um, this is, of course, a ridiculous conversation, but Marky Mark is a ridiculous man. So I decided to do a completely different interpretation of that. So that's something I did on 9-11 on Twitch. And then also that highlight is on, on YouTube as well, if you guys want to go check that out. Or if you want to see some of the best of the best that get clipped out, uh, you can also go to my YouTube. That's youtube.com slash um, Hassan Piker, actually, I think. I'm not entirely sure what my YouTube username is, but if you Google Hassan Piker, it'll come up. Anyway, and, and for Twitch, it's if you if you search Hassanabi, it should come up. That's H-A-S-A-N-A-B-I. Anyway, I'm almost done with the cooking. Of, I mean, almost done with the cutting of this chicken. There was a lot of chicken this time around. So what will we do once the chicken is done being cut? We're going to spice it. We're going to get into the good stuff. And you guys haven't really asked a lot of questions in the process. So I don't know what to do here. I don't know how to answer your questions. Um, but I'm going to get into describing exactly how to, uh, as we move into the second uh, phase in this process. He makes me hungry. Your Twitch used to work for me, but now it doesn't. Some of y'all need a water break. What are the side dishes accompanying the chicken? Uh, tzatziki. Uh, I also have, like, this is tahini chicken. I call it tahini chicken because I put tahini in the aftermath of the process. Uh, I really like it. Oh, but, yeah, let's take a look at some spices, guys. Let's get spicy with it. You know what I'm saying? Because spices are important. Hold on. I'm trying to also, like, move this so it doesn't get hit by the light too much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring back the spices now. Alright, we got brown cumin. Alright! Almost there. Oh. 
we go. Okay, so we got granulated garlic. We have the classic staple black pepper. You got your classics with the natural sea salt. You know what I mean? You know how it is. You know what's going on. You know what the deal is. A little bit of red chili pepper. Uh, and then some ground cumin, which is, I like to call the secret to every single Mediterranean recipe. Um, and then some Mediterranean oregano, some, um, uh, some onion salt, some Mediterranean oregano, and then also some more granulated garlic, but this time it's like fancier garlic power, so I'm probably going to use this. I accidentally threw up in the other one. But yeah, I, d I, d I dabble in the, in the, everything I throw in there. I just kind of eyeball it, and I recommend that you do too. Honestly, if you want to become a good cook, um, you just need to eat well first. Like, you need to eat a lot. The only reason why I know what spices work with one another, in what way, is because, it's not because I watched a lot of, like, YouTube cooking videos or anything. I've never actually done that, or I've never even really been a big fan of the cooking channel. It's only because I know what works well and what my taste buds correspond to certain spices. So Mediterranean oregano, I don't really toss a lot of that in there because I think it's like too powerful. Um, but definitely, when it comes to garlic and onions, I dab them. I, I dab on them, haters. You know, I'm just like, uh, uh, like that. By the way, today's story is going to be on Botham John again, uh, extending from Botham John. I mean, extending from Trayvon Martin all the way to Botham John, and how uh, the criminalization of black victims. Uh, in, in, in media and also the way the police conduct themselves uh, and conduct investigations and how damaging that's been overall and across time and how that's used and used to, to justify some really cruel and really inhumane things done to black men in this country, specifically unarmed black men. So that's today's issue. That's what we're going to be talking about today, especially because this comes in the wake of the, the revelation that the nine protesters uh, that are now being called the Dallas Nine were arrested last night after the Dallas Cowboys game for uh, for blocking an intersection by the police, uh, essentially making this a situation where, essentially making this a situation where Amber Geiger, an actual freaking murderer, was uh, arrested for only an hour and then immediately released, was not detained after committing a cold-blooded murder, uh, and then the people that protested that cold-blooded murder and the and the systemic injustice uh, haven't been released as of yet. I don't know if they have actually, I haven't checked it, but when I was writing it, they, they were they were in jail for 16 hours and they hadn't been released yet. So it is a very remarkable, atrocious hypocrisy. So we're going to talk about that as well. The criminalization of black people and uh, black victims and also how uh, black protesters get treated in the media. Hold on, and, and by police. Um, okay, so we did all that. We did the, we did the original spicing stuff. Uh, another secret sauce, I guess, that I added here. Not so much of a secret, but because I've mentioned this before. Now, this is something that they sell at Ralph's, and I don't know. I, I would recommend it for um, non-Ralph's related uh, places as well. You just gotta look for it. It's private selection, Middle Eastern inspired shawarma marinade. Um, I like to, it's, it's essentially literally all the things that I just put in here as spices. And then on top of that, it has uh, pomegranate sours, which is like nut, nut it's is a Turkish thing. Um, so it, it, in my mind, this sauce, I lather on a little bit. Normally it's a marinade. I lather it on with the spices. It, it makes the, one of the more authentic versions of, of, um, like Middle Eastern, uh, chicken. I really greatly enjoy it. I think it's a powerful one, so either you can just use this marinade but, and not spice it. Like I said, I would I would just recommend that you adjust accordingly, according to your taste buds. Like, do you do you think the the marinade is too spicy? Then just use the marinade and try to dilute it a little bit. Do you think the marinade is not spicy enough or not salty? Enough? Then add some salt. That's the way I I go about things. So that is what I recommend to you. The watchers. Now, what do I do next? I have a little Tupperware action. Before we put it in the Tupperware, I uh, here. Hold on. So this is what's going on right now. Before we put it in the Tupperware, I like mix it up a little bit. Here, I use the knife to like hold it up a little bit, like to, to prop up certain parts of this. Uh, there's a lot of cleaning in the process of this, unfortunately, and that's a little annoying. But 
What are you going to do? Even in a bachelor pad like mine, I think this is something that we can accomplish. It's not a big deal. If I have, in my in my uh, daily regimen, if I have time to be able to do this, then you should be able to do this as well, given the fact that I literally stream for like seven hours every day and, and spend the first half of my day writing and shooting a video for you guys to enjoy. I find time to go work out in between and then also even cook this sort of chicken. It's all about preparation ahead of time. So if I'm able to do it with intermittent fasting, um, you can do it too, okay? So yeah. What I'm doing here is just basically flipping it so that the sides that weren't as touched by the spices or weren't as touched by the salt and all the other pepper and all that other stuff or the shawarma sauce uh, that I put in afterwards also gets a little piece of that. So, and then comes the second part of this where we essentially take this entire thing and start tossing it in here. You know? Some of these might get... Uh, some of these might fling out of the uh, out of your your range of the container. Don't worry about it. You can clean it afterwards. Just just you know try to get as much of that in there as you possibly can. Uh, again, I don't clean my chicken anyway. So if my chicken also touches my counter, I clean the counter, but I don't necessarily uh, think about cleaning the chicken, <laughs> which I know a lot of you will find disgusting. But here's what I will tell you: it has worked for me, and I think. Probably it's worked for me because I've eaten disgusting shit my entire life in the streets of Turkey by Turkish vendors that don't have to adhere to FDA standards. So I, like I said, I built a constitution that is essentially, um, you know, I, I have a stomach that is essentially like a steel trap. Nothing affects me. I've been talking about how powerful my stomach is for far too long. I believe ultimately this is going to bite me back in the ass. Uh, and then, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna have uh, issues later down the line. But for the time being, I think we're good. All right, you clean up the crust. All right, hold on. Do one last like quick, quick mixture in here. You know, inside the. All right. Okay. Virtually bring a hazmat suit to clean up all of the stuff in the end. And uh, that's it, folks. That's pretty much it. That's what we're doing. That's how we do this out here. All right? Some of you guys don't know, but now you know. Hold on. Let me just, like, pull this down a little bit more. Okay, that's terrible. That, that lighting is just got awful. I don't know what to do there. All right, I'm going to put this in the kitchen. I mean, in the fridge. That's what I'm going to be eating later tonight. The beautiful part about this is that this can sit for a long time too. So that's what I usually uh, you know, I usually put the marinade uh, All right, but we're not going to get into the cleaning element right now. We're going to do that later because obviously we need to get started on the Twitch stream. Uh, so I'm going to go over and actually start the Twitch stream really quickly. And you guys can join me there as well. And uh, hold on. And, then I'll, uh, and then I'll come back eventually when I'm cooking. To, uh, to finish up my cleaning process. Oh, yeah. Oh, hold on. All right. Anyway. Oops. Oh, oh. All right, you guys. We got 11% battery on my laptop. Let's venture over to my over to my room now. I'm going to turn this off for now. Okay. You guys see that? It's a perfect way to to most efficiently um, 
Most efficiently cooked chicken. Okay. There we go. Alright, I'm going to fire up the Twitch stream, and then we'll talk a little bit about what I wanted to talk about originally here, uh, and then we'll move over to Twitch, and we'll continue the conversation there. Which I'm sure a lot of you are excited about, because a lot of you are genuinely fans of the Twitch stream. Uh, actually, it would be really helpful if you guys who are still on here, who love the Twitch stream, to, to deliver some testimonials as to why it's a good idea for people to join Twitch. Um, I'm sure you guys have been doing that already. I haven't been checking the comments, really. I'm going to take a look at that right now. The music's a little too loud, huh? This entire time? I hope it wasn't too loud this entire time. I guess we can turn it off, really. I, I was far away, that's why. I was, like, very far away from the camera. So that's part of the reason why I uh, wanted to... Um, anyway, oh, shit. I didn't realize I was in a group chat with someone from... Uh, from Washington Post that has like a, hold on, IRL. We're gonna talk about Brett Kavanaugh nope, and how he got pwned, so that's happening right now. Uh, hold on. Um, Wow, my mods are hitting me up saying, what the fuck is Donald Trump doing? Oh, God. There's just, like, I literally go away for, like, three and a half minutes. You know what I mean? Like, I go away for, I'm live now on Twitch, by the way, so you guys can go there. Like I said, twitch.tv slash uh, it's the It's the pinned comment up there. If you just click on that link, you can go there. You can do it on your phone. It'll take you to a browser. You can do it in any way, shape, or form you want to. Um, anyway, uh, but, yeah, it's just it's a very simple process. I've already gone live on there. I'm gonna play some music. I'm gonna play some sweet, sweet, sweet tunes on there right now. Get those, t uh, get those sweet tunes going for the boys, um, for the boys and girls out here. Uh, okay, hold on. All right, let's do this. All right, let's uh, let's play some lo-fi music here, because uh, I know that this is something that people enjoy. Anyway, all right, lo-fi hip hop beats to relax and study to. Okay, never mind. This is a bomb concealer. This is a person. Alright, we don't want to hear that. We want to hear some bomb music. Alright. Anyway, we're back. Okay, like I said, I'm, I'm already on there. Is Fox News propaganda? Yes, absolutely it is. Fox News is just, uh... What was in your hustler bag? I don't have a hustler bag. Do I? When? What hustler bag? I mean, I... I Candace Rose, but you can support your favorite streamer host with a subscription. Yeah, that's true. It is a better, it is a better, uh, it is a better platform. What do you think is the best way to get somebody to understand racism in America? I think some, one of the ways to understand it is, is by tying it to, so a lot of people that have privilege are obviously not going to be able to ever fully understand the severity of, of systemic racism, right? So what you have to do, I did make my meal loose, sorry, you missed it. So what you have to do is essentially uh, kind of frame it in a way that they can understand it, uh, point, to a, point to a reference that they, they will get, you know what I mean? Like, and, and one of the ways in which I found uh, this to be successful is if you talk about bullying, because in many respects, uh, bullying and racism are, are, are somewhat similar to one another at the individual level. Obviously, at the systemic level, it's a little bit different, but like, at the individual level, uh, those individuals who are racist will prop up that systemic racism across time and, and, you know, denying that racism even exists or denying that systemic racism exists is another way that they can do this. And, uh, and especially if a lot of people feel this way, then it's a, it's a, it's a meaningful problem. So um, at the individual level, the way to do it is by, by uh, trying to use terms that, they, that people who are privileged can also understand. And everyone has an experience either by being the bully or be or being bullied uh, with bully when you're a child it happens to everyone or it happens to a lot of people in in meaningful or, or not even as meaningful ways but 
it still happens, so it's something that they can understand and associate with. And why does that happen? Why do people bully? Well, they bully because of their own personal insecurities or their own personal anxieties and 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 in a way that you can you can show that to people. You can help them understand. Uh, you can go back potentially to historical references and, and talk about how, look, the oligarchs have always sought to divide us. The rich people in America have always sought to divide us in order to make sure that we were fighting amongst ourselves in order not to understand uh, who is taking all the wealth away, who is taking all the wealth that we're creating away from us in post-reconstruction America uh, in order, in an effort to exploit the, the, the newly freed slaves uh, who were black and also uh, the white working population, the white working class, just like poor white Americans. Uh, they, they started this idea that there was racial superiority. It was a justification for slavery already, but they started using that uh, for a justification of, of Jim Crow laws and segregation uh, in an effort to make it feel like, uh, in an effort for the white working class to ultimately feel like they uh, still had someone that was underneath them. You know, I'm doing, I'm doing poorly and I'm getting, uh, you know, I, I feel like I'm getting screwed here, but at least I'm not black. So that's, that's essentially what uh, still goes on in this country and, and, you know, there's a lot of divide. Hey, what's going on, Twitch? I'm here. I'm live. Uh, I, I just, I'm wrapping up with the, with the Facebook audience right now. I was talking about how you can uh, explain to someone what, uh, oh shit, how to explain someone uh, the, the negative consequences of racism, someone who simply does not understand, that's what we were talking about, so, yeah, alright, what's good, what's good, alright, we got 71 people on here, perfect, um, in any case, alright guys, uh, but yeah, I hope that was helpful, you know, you, you point to, you point to, uh, anecdotal data that, that corresponds to their, their personal experience that they can relate to. And then you also talk about historical references, right? Like historical points where, uh, where like there were at least uh, capital reasons for why racism existed or material reasons for why racism existed. And then that's how you do it. I mean, it's hard. It's really hard. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, there are plenty of people who think like, oh, well, it didn't happen to me. Racism has never affected me as a white person, so I don't think it exists. And uh, it, it's going to be a difficult process, but I urge everyone to, you know, I urge everyone to uh, to uh, take on the emotional labor if they can, you know? I love hat days. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you, Nicole, for loving hat days. I'm here. Um... Battlefield, is, I mean, Call of Duty is over, by the way, so uh, that's, uh, that's a really sad, sad situation. Um, so I'm not even going to be able to do that tonight, which makes me upset, which means that I might actually have to uh, play a little bit of Fortnite. So I don't know if you guys are excited about that or not, but, oh, Jesus Christ, Space, I know you want to talk about these tariffs. I really don't want to get into that. I feel like there's a lot going on that, I mean, it sucks. The tariffs are ridiculous, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's one of the more like legal uh, ways that Donald Trump has, or, or I mean, it's damaging, but it's like it's one of the ways that I can still associate it with like a tangible philosophy behind it. You know what I mean? It's not just like pure racism. Anyway, guys, I'm leaving. Uh, I'm going on Twitch, so twitchtv slash Hasanabi. I'm already on. I'm already live there. So, um, anyway, yeah, that's that's what it is. So go there, click on there. And, and join us on this journey. The economy is better, isn't it, lol? No, it's not, Lou Smythe. And if you want to understand why the economy isn't better, because uh, the market factors are not necessarily uh, are not necessarily representative of a healthy economy, you can go get the answer to that uh, question at uh, at my Twitch at twitch.tv/hasanavi. All right, peace, guys. Hmm. Hmm.